Piggy banks are wonderful for me. My mother told me the system of dividing up money first. I put those two together of envelopes and, and pigs. And sure enough, out came bunnies, three of them. I also um, made jars for my money. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Wow, look Wars, at that. They're Star Wars themed because I love Star Wars. Star Wars is cool. Is that, a, is that Yoda on it? Yeah, it's Yoda because he, he has wisdom and one time is kind of like saving. That's having wisdom. What if you were the living embodiment of all pervasive peace? What if all sentient beings all around you increase their vibration towards harmony by merely being in your contact? What if through conscious reasoning, focused will, and intentional living, you reform yourself? thereby becoming a catalyst in sparking transformation in others. I'm Shelpa Lewis, meditation, mindset, and mindfulness coach for midlife mompreneurs. And you are listening to Omnipresent Awareness, the podcast that will inspire you to use your story to serve humanity in not just healing, but thriving as souls each fulfilling their highest purpose. Namaste. Thanks for tuning in to Omnipresent Awareness. This is your host, Shilpa Lewis, and welcome back. Okay, so I'm running a little challenge as I'm trying to get more people to discover this podcast and the conversations that inspire those who value personal growth. And the best way to do that is to leave reviews. You can leave a review on Spotify, Google Podcast, or Apple Podcast. So here is a little request from me to you. If you feel like you have received any value at all from these episodes, then please write a little review and take a screenshot of your review. Once you've done that, email that screenshot to me at omnimindfulness at gmail.com. Once I get your screenshot, you will receive one of my infographics, Spark Your Meditation Practice Through Sankalpa. Sankalpa is the Sanskrit word for intention setting. Along with this, you will receive a link to my guided meditation where you can daily practice intention setting with some inspirational music and breath work. This infographic, along with the guided meditation, is guaranteed to have you start your practice for meditation with a spark. It is my gift for you for being a listener, being a supporter, and of course, for you to be able to manifest the best meditation practice. So thank you for showing up, listening, and being inspired, and most importantly, taking action. I appreciate you. So again, please don't forget to take a screenshot of your review and send it to omnimindfulness at gmail.com and I will send you that infographic and the link to the guided meditation. We are now in the season of Seeds of Abundance, which is our third podcast season honoring spring, new mindsets, and abundance. The season will cover mindful money mindset movement and healing, law of attraction, and embracing the feminine energy. And now, a conversation recorded with my partner in awareness, Tanya, from our joint podcast, Mindful Mompreneur Moments. And oh yeah, if you could, please listen to the very end of the podcast for powerful insights from our guest. Thank you. Greetings, sweet souls. Today's episode is so special on so many levels. This month, we cover the topic of mindfulness and money. My mother, who passed away a few years ago, truly wanted my son, her grandson, Omni, to learn about finances at a young age. 
and this episode is co-hosted by Omni and Tanya's son Tyler. Both of them had an incredible conversation with the author of My Money Bunnies, Mike Bikalowitz. And both of them are nine years old and have taken special interest in learning about the topic of finances and how to be mindful with money. And here's a quick word from Omni. I am so excited to have this conversation with Mike as I've been using his technique for saving money. In this month, I will be teaching my third grade class the technique I learned from my money bunnies on how to save and manage money, and I owe it all to Mike. By his 35th birthday, Mike had founded and sold two multi-million dollar companies. Confident that he had the formula to success, he became a small business angel investor and proceeded to lose his entire fortune. Then he started all over again, driven to find better ways to grow healthy, strong companies. Mike has devoted his life to the research and delivery of innovative, impactful entrepreneurial strategies. He is the creator of Profit First, which is used by hundreds of thousands of companies across the globe to drive profit. He is also the creator of Clockwork, a powerful method to make any business run on automatic. His book, My Money Bunnies, captures the innovative cash management system of Profit First, kids will love going on an adventure with Sophie, who learns how to save for her big dream while still having funds for her daily experiences. Today, Mike leads two multi-million dollar ventures as he tests his latest business research for his books. He is a former small business columnist for the Wall Street Journal and business makeover specialist for MSNBC. Mike is a popular main stage keynote speaker on innovative entrepreneurial topics. And he is also the author of Get Different, Fix the Next, Clockwork, Profit First, Surge, The Pumpkin Plan, and The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. Check out the link in the description to learn more about Mike. And it is my honor to introduce Mike, Omni, and Tyler. And for all you listeners out there, listen all the way through. I take a moment to share my money-saving technique. Next up, Mike. Hi, Mike. Thanks for being with us. It's my joy. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to see all of you. It's good to have you, Mike. Thank you for being here. Hi, I'm Tyler, and I'm eight years old. And my question is, what made you think of writing this book? Well, first of all, Tyler, it is a joy to meet you. Tyler is one of my favorite names. My son is also named Tyler. Oh, and I think cool. like you, he goes by Ty at times. Yes. So you have a really, really cool name. Good for you. <laughs> um, why I wrote the book was, believe it or not, there was a time I was your age, Tyler, and um, I w- didn't have an allowance. My mom and my dad, I would, I would do chores around the house to make money. My mother taught me uh, a system of using envelopes. She came from Germany, and when she came here as a child, she brought this system with her. And when she had some money, she put one envelope was for food, another one was to pay for the home, and so forth. And she would divide her money up. I noticed that, and I learned that she was she used her money very well because she knew what the money was intended for before she spent it. So that's a system I grew up with, and um, I found it to be a wonderful system for all people of all ages, but it's got to start, you know, when we're eight years old or so, we should be using a system. So I wrote the book to hopefully inspire you, Tyler, and other kids to start a system where when you make money, you know what money is is available for what purpose. And I love bunnies. I love bunnies. We, there's actually one in our house right now. Indiana's his name. And um, I just have a love for bunnies. I used to dress as a bunny rabbit when I was a kid. So it was uh, why I wanted to have the bunnies be the envelopes or the storage systems for the money. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, I'm Omni and I'm nine years old. Hi, Omni. Hi. And my first question for you is, how did you come up with the idea of the money bunny system? So building on the story that's shared with Tyler and you is my mother used these envelopes. But what I noticed when I was a kid, 
maybe you have one too, Omni, is I had a piggy bank. And I love my piggy bank because I had a little stopper in the bottom. And when I put money in there, if I wanted to get something or give money to help someone, I could pull out that stopper and pull the money out. But I only had one piggy bank. So I, when I put, pulled the money out, it was always all the money. So if I wanted to buy something, I had all of this money in my hands, like that's all I have. And if I wanted to help someone and give them money, it would be all the money I had. But then the next day, all the money would be gone. So I decided to use an animal, like a piggy bank. But like I told you, I love bunnies. So I, I thought maybe instead of having one, what if I had each bunny with a, a name of its of its purpose on it. So one-time bunny, a sometimes bunny, an anytime bunny. And then when money comes in, I can divide it up into these three different bunnies. And now when I want to support or help someone, I can use that bunny called the sometimes bunny. Uh, when I wanted to get something that I really like, I love lollipops, I still do. I would uh, use the anytime bunny for that. So that's how the system came about. I, I noticed that piggy banks are wonderful for me. My mother told me the system of dividing up money first. I put those two together of envelopes and, and pigs. And sure enough, out came bunnies, three of them. I also um, made jars for my money. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Wow, look Wars, at that. They're Star Wars themed because I love Star Wars. Star Wars is, is cool. Is that a, is that Yoda on it? Yeah, it's Yoda because he, he has wisdom and one time is kind of like saving. That's having wisdom. I think that's fantastic, Omni. Wow. And I also made an anytime one. That's a Stormtrooper one. <gasps> Stormtroopers are so cool. And I used to, it, I used to have a Darth it, Vader uh, necklace when I was your age. I had a necklace with Darth Vader on. It was my favorite necklace ever. <laughs> so cool, Omni. It's Stormtrooper because Stormtroopers are always always around in Star Wars, and this is anytime. Also, That's very I, smart. Also, I made a Darth Vader one. Oh, there was Darth Vader. And what and which which jar is Darth Vader? It's sometimes because he's not always around in all the Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, he's and he's big and strong. That's amazing. That's so cool, Omni. Nice job. And I, I love that you did that. You know, when when I wrote the book, I was hoping that when kids would read it with their parents or loved ones, that they would make the jars that they get excited about. I love that you did Star Wars. That's so neat. That's so neat. Thank you, Mike. Thank yeah. you so much. Tyler's going to show you the one that he created. Let me say. I put, I made a one-time jar, but I didn't decorate it all. Okay. The jars, but I put a butterfly. Oh, I love it. Because butterflies, we don't really see them in the winter. And right here, right now it's the winter. So we can only see them one time in the year. Oh, that's so smart, Tyler. <laughs> Where I am, it's the same thing. So we get butterflies, but like you said, only in the spring or summer. And they're, to me, they're the most beautiful insect on the planet. They, they'll fly near our house. Sometimes we get the monarch butterflies, the orange ones, we get yellow ones, blue ones. And it's so beautiful. I, I think that's the perfect choice. Nicely done. Uh, my next question is, did you save well when you were younger? No, <laughs> I was bad. I mean, I did at times and then I didn't use the system. So like I told you, I had that one piggy bank, but I didn't use my mom's envelope system back then. I didn't divide the money up into the butterfly jar or the, the Darth Vader jar. I, I just had one, one uh, piggy bank. And then when I would want something and my parents said it was okay to get it, I would use up all the money. And then the next day I'd be sad because I didn't have any money left, but I think I learned from that mistake. I learned that later on in life, if I divided money up, I'd always have enough to do the things I wanted to do for myself and to help my family and to help people I didn't even know. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I was wondering if your one-time jar is the same jar where you invest and save also. Oh, wow. These are smart questions. So, yes. Um, what I do is 
I have an anytime jar, a one-time jar, and a sometimes jar. The sometimes is something I can give to help others. Sometimes it's helping family. And sometimes, sometimes you need to help yourself. Just as much as you love your friends and family, you need to love yourself too. Sometimes when you need help, you can help yourself. The one-time jar is, I use it just for that. I will say, you know, one time this year, I want to have money put away um, just for extra security. And then I would put the money there. Or maybe I want to put my savings. So when I was a kid around your age, my mom did help me set up a bank account and I started to put money in there. So while I didn't have all three jars just yet, I would sometimes take money out of that piggy bank of mine and put it in the bank. And that is one of the intentions of the one-time bunny. Get that one thing you want. Um, and sometimes the one thing you want is to save for the future. I got an idea and I actually made an invest jar. <laughs> That's a Mandalorian thing. Fantastic. My gosh. We should have written this book together. <laughs> Me, you, and Tyler should have teamed up. We could have been co-authors on this. Mm-hmm. I love that you're doing that. And, and that is the intention. When I wrote my Money Bunnies, I was hoping that children who read it realized you can make as many bunnies as you want. And you can use them for as many purposes as you want. I think that's really smart. Good job. He has a little phrase that he wanted to share with you that goes with the jar. From the Mandalorian um, show, um, I wrote down, this is a way for invest. Wow, look at you. I like how you tie in the themes and everything with the, the Star Wars. That's really good. And, and as, as, you, uh, as the time goes forward, I think you may even find new jars to create, something that you're envisioning for your future, and you can make that another jar. Really good. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Mike, thank you so much for making these this book so easy for the kids to read. Tyler read it so quickly and he was able to articulate it so well. So good job for making it so easy for kids to read. Well, thank you for saying that. And good job, Tyler, for doing it. It's funny. I was talking to someone who wrote a cookbook and it's how to make different food, you know, different foods, recipes. And she told me writing a recipe is different than cooking it. Writing is the easy part. Actually making the meal is tough. So good job, Tyler, reading it, but actually doing it. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you so much. And Tanya, I think you have a next question now. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, can you give our audience some insights on how to get our children to become mindful about money? For sure, for sure. So and that these, some of these are my beliefs, but I believe that a big part of money is the earning of money, not the granting of money. So uh, at our house, with our, as I raise my children, they're all adults now. Uh, we never had an allowance that we gave our kids, but we had a work chart um, of you can you know, clean the kitchen or take out the garbage or the different things that need to be done to run the business of a house. And you can sign up to do that work and get paid accordingly. So I think learning to earn money is important. What's interesting too, is since we had three children, um, the older one got particularly smart and started taking all the tasks and then delegating them out to the other kids and earning a stipend as a result. So uh, just forewarning, um, that could happen. Um, I think also when it comes to the bunny system or whatever jar system you use, this concept of dividing up money is very important but it needs to also be something of their or our, you know, the child's creation. So what Omni did is so cool because Omni loves Star Wars. And what Tyler did with the, with the butterfly, that is amazing. Uh, And Tyler's story of how it ties into how they, they come out once a year is, is perfect. I think that's the biggest thing as opposed to saying, here's the system you must use. It's now a system that you create. And since you've given life to it, the likelihood of staying with that system um, is, is much greater. I, we did introduce these systems to my children. And uh, today, the way they manage their money is, uh, I'm very proud of how they handle it. And it's much more sophisticated, but the essential system of earn money and divide it up for its intended use before you spend it is, is with them. And I, I think it'll be with them for life. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Tyler was reading it out loud at one point and he said the system, he used the word system and my husband is the money savvy one. <laughs> my husband will hear it and he was like, oh my God, like he pulled him aside. That's exactly how you're supposed to see it. And so nice, yeah, Tyler, it, nicely done. It was, it was awesome. It was That's really cool. a good read. So thank you. Thank you for your thank answer. You. It's great insight. It, oh, absolutely, right. Mike. Um, this is insightful. I think children need it. I needed it. I still need it as an adult. So it's awesome. Yeah. It, well, thanks for your honesty. I, I still need it. So, uh, you know, um, I, I didn't write this saying, I am so smart here. I'm departing wisdom to the world. This is a system that has been around forever. This is just my own version of a system that works, but it's also a system I use. Like when we earn money, when I earn money, it gets divided up into paying for our household responsibilities, saving for maintenance when things break and, and stuff, saving for the uh, vacation, saving for a future. So we now have for our home about 14 bunny equivalents, 14 accounts, but it's been so freeing. Uh, there's no worry about money because I know what it's available for and, and how to use it. To, to the prior point, it was like, my wife also says, I'm not good at money. She's extraordinary at money because we have the system in place. And, and this works with how she thinks. I'm really good with money now because we have a system in place and this is how I work with it. I, I think we're all good with money. I, I really do. I just think we need a system that works with naturally who we are. You know, and what's interesting about at least my perspective on money growing up was there's this connotation of fear and that yeah, yeah. would screw with the mindset. And you yeah. go into this loop and cycle, when you convince yourself you don't know how to manage it, but what it really is, is having a system to take the fear out. That's exactly right. It, it's very fear-based and, it, and it's, uh, it's uh, loss, what they call it loss aversion, meaning there's always this fear about if you have it, do you know how to cling on to it? But money to me is much more like breathing. Um, I think there is a risk of accumulating money and not using it. it you become miserly. You know, there's, there's Ebenezer Scrooges of the world, which brings about disdain and and disappointment to ourselves, the sadness. Now, there's the other extreme too, is where money just flows through our fingers like water. And now money has control over us. We're, we're surviving check by check. And that has disdain and sadness. It's this balance of knowing we have control, but that it also is a freeing mechanism. We can do what we want, when we want, within the parameters of what our system tells us. So it's a very freeing system. And, uh, I just want to drive home that point again. I think we're all good with money. If you know how to earn money and spend money, you've mastered money. We just need a system now to, to channel that behavior in a very effective way. Yeah, I, I think your humility uh, resonates so much with us and with our audience. They will resonate very deeply with that because, you know, you created an, an amazing book that I think should be in all Thank of you. the schools, actually. Oh, that's, that's it should so be in, in, in school you. systems. Um, and it segues way right into the, the next question that Shilpa is going to ask, because your mindfulness is, is very present. We feel it. Absolutely. It comes through in your what you write. And Thank I you. follow you on social and it comes through. So my last question is, what role does mindfulness play in your daily life? And I know I've been reading a little bit about how much you love to write. I'm aware of that. So does do you think of writing as a form of mindfulness is another yes. question? Well, I I almost got a little teary just thinking of the story. Mindfulness may have saved my life. And that's a little bit of an aggressive definition of, it, of the impact of writing on my life. There was a time when I was very depressed and sad because I had no control over my money. Um, when I became an adult and made earned a lot of money through the work I did, I spent it like it was water, like it was raining. And I lost the, my house as a result. And my children were young when that happened. And um, that actually reinstituted this concept of my money bunnies when we brought it to our family immediately. But I was so sad and depressed during that time that I started journaling, not because I wanted to. A friend of mine said, you have to do this. And between me and you, it's the cheapest form of therapy on the planet. I just started writing things and, and they were not like rah-rah myself on. They weren't positive affirmations. It was just my thoughts in the moment, which were sometimes pretty angry thoughts at myself or others unfairly, but I had to point the finger somewhere I felt. But every time I wrote, there was a moment of clarity, sometimes for five minutes, sometimes for a few hours, where all of a sudden I felt that weight, that burden, that stress removed from me, and I could focus in on what I needed to do. 
Um, so that's been very important. Before we started recording this, I shared, I started Transcendental Meditation, um, which I think is a form of mindfulness, is to allow ourselves to strip away that constant stream of thought on survivability and thrivability and work orientation and family and just be present with perhaps a greater force. And uh, that has been extraordinary. I, I will tell you this one final thing is the, the loss of all my money is also the greatest gift I've ever received. And um, I didn't know that at the time. It was, a, it was extraordinarily painful. I don't wish it upon anyone, but I also realized I needed that experience to realize what I needed to learn and what I needed to teach. Ultimately, what I write is actually what I'm trying to learn. I, I didn't write the money, my money bunnies only to help and support children. I needed to reconstitute that again for myself and to, to remaster it. Um, everything I write, and I write mostly business books, um, almost exclusively right now, but I'm going to be writing more children's books. Everything I write is something that I'm really trying to reconstitute or relearn or learn for the first time for myself. And that's an absolutely beautiful point. It's um, in the space that Tanya and I, um, I would say not work, work has a different connotation, but um, perform in, I believe that much of our content really is a reflection of what we're trying to master ourselves. So right, right. I was, once I was at, visiting a university to lecture and I was walking in with a friend, he walked by a room where students were taking a class and he pointed in, he said, oh, there's the greatest student. I was like, I, I didn't pay much mind to it. And we walked by another room. He's like, oh, there's the best student. But a third time I said, okay, tell me, who is it? The person sitting up front, the one taking the most copious notes? He said, no, no, it's the teacher. The teacher's always the best student. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. What we teach, we must learn. And therefore the teacher is the best student. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're teaching this because you're also by default mastering it. Yeah, it's just amazing because most entrepreneurs, the really great ones, it, it comes from deep within something that they needed for themselves in order to then be able to teach it, but then continue learning because as Correct. you teach, you learn. Yeah, you are singing to the choir, Tanya. It's like, I'm so with you on this. Um, yes, I can just simply say yes. Yeah, Mike, just you've inspired me on so many levels, uh, not only through the book, but just what you just shared about your wisdom and your humility, that's powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, we're all on this rock spinning around. There's no difference between me and you and anyone else. We're, we're, we're all the same. There was a time, sinfully, I thought I was better than other people because of the success I'd achieved and uh, losing everything it had to be rewired. And then there was a time I thought I was worse than everyone else. And I had to relearn that too. I'm not, I'm just me. I'm just different. And you're just you and we're just us. We're all just in a different part of this journey, but my gosh, collectively, what a force are we are. If we simply just work with each other, if we just help each other, my gosh, are we unstoppable? And that's my hope for all of us. And that's what I hope I contribute. I just want to share what I know and I want to learn from everyone else and amplify my game as a result. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. This has been such a joy. The, Thank the you. Boys, I'm sure they were slightly nervous, but you were so cool with them. It was just so easy. I'm the Tyler and Omni. You were amazing. I was the nervous when I'm. I'm still a little dry in my mouth. I need to. I think I have some water here. You were amazing, yeah. both of you. I think you have uh, podcasting in your future, minimally. Maybe uh, some news shows. So we do have one last bit. Tyler has a shout out, and my son has a shout out in a moment as well. Yeah, Tyler would not forgive me if I didn't uh, let him give a little shout out. What did you want to? Who did you want to shout out to, Ty? I wanted to shout out to my friend Mike who's in my school. <laughs> That's cool. Mikey, I hope you heard that from Tyler. Go ahead and say. Oh, he's getting a little bit uh, shy. Do you want me to say for you? His shout out is to his grandma in heaven who wanted him to learn about finances. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a very nice shout out, Omni. I'm sure she heard it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Here's my tip for mindful money management. Today's tip is you can have more than one one-time jar. One time is for things you're really saving up for. Consider making one of those jars an invest jar. You can always start investing at a young age.
Thanks again for tuning in, sweet souls. Check out the links in the descriptions and please take a moment to like, follow, and share and continue to be omnipresent.